Hi, my name is Michelle Burns, and we're here at the first annual International Contemporary Art Fair at the Grand Del Mar here in beautiful San Diego. It's being over-optimistic. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of uh, not going through a normal practice of playing the what-if game, which is really what should be done before making any major decisions. What if this goes wrong? What if that goes wrong? What if this is delayed? What if so-and-so dies? What if so-and-so can't produce? I mean, the, and there are good answers to each of the what-if questions, but if you don't ask the questions, you're never going to get a good overall picture of what the situation is. Exactly. One of the problems that entrepreneurs have is they have this blind faith that they can, uh, they can avoid all problems. They don't want to do a business plan because they feel that that's constraining. Uh, and a lot of companies have that. Companies as well as entrepreneurs. Yeah, well you have a, a city called Detroit which was the citadel of corporate arrogance and look where it went. They could do no wrong. They knew exactly what the public would buy. Well. They went by. What did you, what do you mean by your 12-step process for entrepreneurs? Well, I'm not sure which, what you're referring to. Um, there is an entrepreneurial process which should start with identifying the benefit to the customer and it's nice if that benefit is unique but not necessary. Roy Kroc didn't have to have unique hamburgers to be successful. He was successful for a lot of reasons but the product wasn't unique. Mm -hmm. But And nor did he start the business, he acquired the business. Mm -hmm. There was a McDonald's before he came along. But in starting a new business, there has to be a well-researched and valid definition of the benefit to the consumer of the product that is being offered at the price that it is being offered. And frequently, the product benefit is clear but where the entrepreneur gets messed up is they can't deliver it at the price that the customer will buy it at and still make a profit. So there is a whole process of planning a business. And planning is something that particularly enthusiastic entrepreneurs like to do least. Mm. Um, there is the whole business of the structuring of a business. Do you take a partner? Do you have a pyramid as your business structure where essentially the decisions are ultimately made by one individual? Uh, do you share the ownership of the business with your employees? Uh, there's, it's a whole process, mm -hmm. and we're very good at starting businesses in the United States. Um, one of the problems is that the, we tend to ha run the businesses until they have to be closed. And businesses, the, the whole process would be better if we closed businesses earlier. There's just no reason for an entrepreneur to run a business until the telephone company comes in and takes out the phones. Hmm. There's a lot of ego involved. There's a lot of embarrassment involved. There's a lot of human emotion involved. Um, but uh, knowing when to leave a party is as important as deciding what party you're going to go to. Very much so. And with this economic landscape, do you find that more people are entering into creating, again, more businesses? 
They're being forced to. Yes, right. Because the day of ever-increasing employment by larger companies is over. Mm -hmm. And I don't see that it's going to return. So you're going to have more and more independent businesses formed. And I would hope that they would be formed by people who had more of an entrepreneurial education and background. Mm -hmm. When you say more of that type of background, are you talking about someone that is more of a risk taker, someone that maybe does a lot more planning? The entrepreneurs never see the risk. Mm. People who observe uh, entrepreneurs see the risk. Uh, it's very different. The entrepreneur always assumes that they're able to manage. It's, uh, it's very much the same. And I would hope that uh, more and more colleges are offering entrepreneurship education courses. Uh, there are more and more sources of mentors for entrepreneurs. Um, and the entrepreneurial characteristic is something that can be identified in very young children. It has to do with leadership. The terms are not completely s uh, interchangeable, mm -hmm. but entrepreneurs are typically leaders. Mm -hmm. The kids in a, in a class in second and third grade can tell you who the leaders are. And if you spend some time in that class, you're probably going to be able to identify who the entrepreneurs will be. So I don't think you can make them. I think you can give people with entrepreneurial tendencies uh, uh, necessary skills. But you're not going to create entrepreneurs through education. You're going to create entrepreneurs who have a better chance of succeeding. Mm. Very good. So there's an innate ability. There's an innate desire, not necessarily an ability. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you tremendously for your time today. I think there's a wealth of knowledge. And I, there's probably many more questions I can ask you, especially on this topic, considering that there's so much opportunity for people through this changing landscape that we have in the economy. and. You know, on the art side, we've learned so much about what to ask for and how to dive deeper into our, you know, our, uh, our art as being, uh, you know, something that we can cherish and have more, um, you know, more of a, a connection with by doing a lot of that research. And then on the business side of things, I think that there's way beyond. I mean, there's, this could lead into two or three more <laughs> interviews. I would be pleased to do it. Oh, with pleasure. Then we will have to definitely do it again. And I thank you kindly for your time, Arthur. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs>